I did leave you off there for a, almost a year with a rather cryptic video there of me grabbing something out of a vending machine. And yes, we have a vending machine now, which lives right next to the AS400, which I still haven't worked on a lot. But here we go. You're fantastic, I would say. Mid to late 70s, maybe early 80s. Vendo branded Pepsi machine, or actually Pepsi branded Vendo machine would be a lot simpler. That was a damn nice price too, three hundred and fifty dollars. Gives you five selections, and uh, barely fit into the car, but otherwise it worked uh, fine after a good cleaning. Now there are a couple things about it that are still a little bit ratty. The Pepsi logo on the side here that you can just kind of see it's all flaked away and it does seem to have the indication that there was some scratch mark maybe there was a sign that was put here that was put onto it I mean it's got its little bit of rust that wouldn't clean out of it and it's faded buttons and you're noticing that there's no white diffuser behind here that's simply because it turned into a powder and wiped off so that needs to be changed but otherwise it does work um, it does have a working compressor in it as well. Um, the compressor actually keeps it cool. Um, it seems to hold a decent enough charge on it, so I don't have to change that out. Uh, and yeah, it's a, well, it's a vending machine. Now, there were a couple things to it that I did make a couple changes to. I think the first thing is, is that you'll notice is that you have, there's that one selection on it, which is guaranteed to be Pepsi. It's like your very static display. And in fact, for this one, um, well, you can't have it on this one here, but this is actually lit. This is the only button that's lit. And it has a nice plastic insert here for Pepsi that gives it nice depth and dimension. The rest of these, well, you were just out of luck. But if you've noticed, Molson Canadian Sleeman's original Heineken and Rickards, that's our current selection of drinks in here. Otherwise, this is now my beer fridge. And you might ask yourself, well, okay, does it still have free pay on it? The answer on that one there is no. Originally it did, but I changed that. And if we go inside here, and unfortunately we can't actually lock it, even though I do have the keys and all that jazz when I received the machine. Whoever had this thing last, there's a pot metal D-shaped device that goes onto here. They took off the lock nut, they took off the washer, took that latch off, and then put that all back on. And there's no indication that there's any force required to open this. There's no crowbar marks. There's nothing on here. It's really clean. So literally, someone just took the latch off it and left it, which was a complete pain. Anyways, no, coin acceptor unit in here. Um, this is the original wire diagram I put into it here. If you're one of those people who have a 117, 120 volt um, Jones plug system here. This is how you wire it here. Actually, hold on a second. I'll give you five seconds Right anyways, this is how you wire it so you get free vend Simple enough, okay anyways what happened is originally there was a switch here You push down on the coin return and it would just hit a switch that was hiding under there I didn't like that idea because you're putting that much booze in here. You want to at least pay back for it so it's currently set up right now so that one dollar put into the machine gives you one drink. And here's a little window thing I was actually was talking about where you can see it can be illuminated from the back from the lighting. None of the others do. I do have a lock put onto the coin box now because it does contain a bit of money. This has the 9300 series Vendo coin acceptor which does accept the buy metal two dollar coins up to 2012. I'll explain that in a minute. I added another modification down here, which is for the winter, and this is actually a circuit breaker slash disconnect switch that turns on and off the compressor and the fan underneath here, and that way it doesn't burn itself out or otherwise run during the winter when it was minus 20. And in fact, I had other problems with that. When you open the door here, this is the other problem without the proper latch. This door kind of hangs open a bit, so it does cycle a bit. So there's a strap that I'm using to hold it shut. It's not elegant. If I can find that latch, sure, we'll work with that. But we open the door, nothing special at all, just pull. 
and inside you have yourself your five columns. And in this case here we have our Pepsi, Rickards, Canadian, uh, our Molson, and yeah, just our Rickards there. Oh wait, no, this is the Heineken here. Why is there a Rickards in here? Well, let me move it over there. Another thing that was missing in this machine when I got it, besides the cover plate that goes over the solenoid motor assembly here, there's a set of shims. And it's mentioned over here, these are the shims right here. Without these shims here, you'll have weird spacing issues with your cans, and they will jam. And mine are not particularly all that good. Um, my first couple of, couple of attempts here, here, I managed to rupture a fair number of cans. It was not fun at all. But there's loading instructions here. There's a full schematic for the entire operation of the machine that's glued on the inside of the unit. Otherwise, it keeps it nice and cold in here. Um, the vending machine weighs a ton uh, loaded in. A lot of it's because of this metal frame here, which actually comes out. You take out these two bolts, another set down here. It pivots out, and you can remove that. You can remove almost everything in here, and um, even with the middle door in, at that point there, I can actually move it around by myself, and it's not that difficult. So I actually ended up, once it was cleaned, it was dragged over here by Dolly Cart and installed. Anyways, so fantastic beer fridge, keeps your booze cold, looks absolutely appealing. How about our selection? Well, this is my little paper inserts here. I actually have this envelope. I've made a template. Whoa, geez, and I've dropped everything. One of the original selections was apple juice, but we'll dump this out here. We're not actually going to think about it, Crush. Where is that bloody template? I've had a couple other um, labels that I've manufactured over the year, over the last couple of months, because I do rotate the selection around, and I get no complaints from that from the other people in the household here that use this. And this gets, lets me keep it fresh, otherwise it's just a nice little template. Um, Google around for the logos and images, Photoshop that into the template, print it out, punch out the uh, selection empty hole, and there we go. But yes, big problem here. Um, first off, deposit nickels, dimes, or quarters, receive change below. And if I can find it in my pocket here, yes, there we are. Uh, loonies and toonies did not fit this machine originally. In fact, I had to widen this a little bit just so it would fit a loonie or a toonie. And now I said it does accept the bimetal, the modern Canadian bimetal coin, like the toonie here. But up until 2012, in 2012 we changed the alloy within the coin. And it throws all um, metal sensing coin acceptors completely off. So if I insert this toonie in, it's just going to reject it. Oh, uh, by the way, I'm also quite aware that there is, um, there is a way to retune the 9300C uh, 9300 series coin co units here and there's actually a jumper which hides behind the flight deck behind this plastic panel and up in here and there's a set of instructions on how to retune it for coins but I've tried that once already actually twice already with multiple different coin samples and I can't seem to make it accept uh, modern coins so um, unless someone can give me a better suggestion on how to do that um, I'm stuck with coins up until 2011 Rejected. same goes with the loony here here we go. Easy identified to be a 2012 because it has a little maple leaf dot in the middle there. I'd insert that. Absolutely nothing. However, if I were to say take this toonie, which was released in or minted in 96, so it's guaranteed to work, I'll put that in. And only because it's a dollar drink, it'll give me back four quarters. But it'll also now enable me to select whatever the hell drink I want. And I think I'm going to go for a... What the hell? Let's go for a Heineken. And there we go. Ah. And it will be a nice cold drink. And there's always that accommodation for these vending machines for a bottle opener onto it. I've added a bottle opener onto it. And it only cost me about $6 on eBay. And when you open the bottle, it actually drops the bottle cap into an opening on the bottom side here, which on the inside of the door is just a bucket, which is currently full of bottle caps. There you go. There's the vending machine. You have an idea of now what exactly I need to have done to it to finish it off. Um, I don't see me going off into a side hobby collecting vending machines. This thing is huge. 
I mean, it is practical in a way. It doesn't use that much energy, but you only need so many vending machines. And one just to dispense your booze? Sure, why not?